Father, take over. Father, take over. Father, we give London to you. Father, bless London. Father, bless all of England. Father, fill us with your love. You are beautiful. You did it. You did it just right. Very good. Do you love the Father? Yes. Do you know, beloved? I'm very much in favor of applauding in church. And I think we should applaud, though not me, but my Father. Can we give to God the Father a beautiful round of applause to the Father? Catholic prayers, it, will, it ends up with the Father. It begins with Jesus, but ends with the Father. Jesus came to bring London to the Father. Not to himself, but through him to the Father. Amen? Amen. This prayer called the Unity Prayer has quite a few imprimaturs, and of course it binds and paralyzes all demon spirits. It's very, very effective. I am an exorcist, and myself and several other exorcists around the world have experienced marvelous uh, releases from the devil when we say this prayer over God's people. A full-blown exorcism in one minute. Just as if Jesus himself was walking the streets of London. Amen. Amen. So right now we're going to say it. You can say it after me. Don't worry, it's not a scary prayer. I'll give you a little secret. The devil is more afraid of you than you are of him. Did you realize that? When you're a faithful Catholic baptized in the Holy Spirit, and especially when you receive the Eucharist, you are stronger than the devil. He's more afraid of you than you are of him. Now, let's put the fear of God into Lucifer right now. Is that okay? we we'll put the fear of God into the devil. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, beloved, first we're going to bless this space to bind and paralyze every demonic being that may be trying to attack us. Would you say this after me, line by line? My adorable Jesus, my adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together. May our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together. To gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. Now, don't you love the St. Michael prayer as well? Yes. We should say it now for the church, but also for all the streets here around us, that Michael will go with his brother angels and drive any demons on the streets of London back into hell. Is that okay? And at the end of this particular talk, I want to pray the chaplet of St. Michael with you today. Is that all right? We'll pray together. We'll put the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of angels, and the one true King of London. We will put Jesus on the altar and pray to the angels for London at the end of this talk, okay? But right now, let's pray that traditional prayer. The angels will come down over us and over the neighborhoods around us. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O princes of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. 
angels of God, our guardians near, to whom God's love leads me here, ever this day and on the to light and to guard, to rule and to guide. Amen. Hallelujah. Beloved, would you please be seated? Two of the most beautiful families in Florida, where I'm from, and in London, where perhaps most of you are from, the most beautiful of families have little flaws inside of them, don't they? There's no perfect family except for the Holy Family. But, beloved, when we get to heaven, we will become perfect in the perfect family of God. Amen? And you know at every Mass, Father was preaching to us eloquently earlier, the pastor of this beautiful parish, that at every Mass, you begin to experience that perfect divine family through the Eucharist. The Father is here. Jesus came and died to bring us the Father. And by the way, Jesus also gave us the Eucharist to bring us the Father too. And so wherever the body of Christ is, and friends, it's truly the body and blood of Christ. I share this all over the world just to give you some idea, but I've seen blood come on the host during two of my masses. I share them just to give you some idea. This is real, it's not a symbol. The Catholic faith is the only real faith in the world. It's the real faith that comes from the real God to make real Londoners enter the real heaven. Amen. Amen. The Lord gave us the Eucharist also to bring you to the Father because you can't separate the three persons of the Trinity. So when you receive Jesus in the body and blood of Christ, you're also receiving the Father and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Isn't that interesting? Amen. It is the body of Christ, not of the Father, not of the Son, but the Father's eternal spirit is also there. So you and I are reconciled to the Father every single day. And beloved, what I've seen in my lifetime, you must have seen this as well, is an utter destruction of fatherhood. A complete destruction of fatherhood. In our families, in Florida, in London, and throughout the world. And I believe it's been done on purpose. And I really picked up on it uh, when I was a young man watching television with my family. I don't watch television anymore. About 25 years ago, I got rid of my television and never brought it back. I saw the evil many years ago coming through the television and so-called good shows, you see. And I noticed that in the shows we were watching that more and more and more, the shows and the television commercials, I saw this pattern every single time that the father was the idiot of the family. The father was always the dumbbell, the idiot. The mother is like the perfect, the perfect woman who knows everything. She's 10 times smarter than dad, of course. And the baby, the child, is the genius who runs the family. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I was being raised, it was exactly the opposite. My dad was the head of the family, my mother was this beautiful, intelligent helper, and we obeyed the kids. We obeyed. Amen? Amen. Now I watch, it's the kids who's the boss of the family. His mom was always a genius, and dad is the idiot who fixes the toilet now and then. This, beloved, is repulsive. It is absolutely repulsive. We love and respect every woman and every man. Amen? Amen. And destroying masculinity and fatherhood is destroying the world, is what's happening. And now, you know, it's gone to incredible lengths now in England and the U.S. with a tremendous number of homosexuals a tremendous number of transvestitism and transgenderism destroying the bodies of children and utter confusion, depression, and suicide because we need the Father. We need fathers. Now, why, beloved, am I feeling right now? I feel a very huge demon trembling right now. I actually can feel him and see his spirit in my spirit. The demon is trembling and he wants to say, No, don't tell them that. 
don't reveal our plan. But all of creation, beloved, comes from the Father. Everything comes from God the Father, through Jesus, by the Holy Spirit. Even the most beautiful creature in the world, the Virgin Mary, she bows to the Father every day. She says, Father, she says, I love you. What can I do for you today? Amen. Amen. And so he said to Mama, this morning, Mama, I want you to go to London, to the shrine of the Holy Rosary, and be there and help Father Jim and all the people this morning. So she's with us today. Well, beloved, fatherhood is good. And we see in a particular way, I see this battle with St. Michael the Archangel. And before, you might say, but all of us were created. But God had just made the angels. And he made, we believe, the universe. But we were not yet made. Before Adam and Eve were created, God made the angels. And one angel, Lucifer, and you know, I, I believe that I've seen him. I've had the demons appear to me in my work. And one came into my bedroom at night, and he was a, a black monster with red eyes. I was seeing him physically in my room. And he was really, really upset at me. And he was threatening me. I believe I've seen Lucifer on more than one occasion. He's really something. He's filled with rage and anger and hatred. He was created good. God has never made a sinner. Every angel and every man and woman and child, he made beautiful. Amen? Amen. Now, beloved, Lucifer was his original name. We call him Satan now. But Lucifer means light bearer. And Lucifer was slowly became enamored of himself. It's almost like when you see somebody, you know, like looking in the mirror too much, some beautiful girls and even a few pretty boys looking in the mirror too much. And my dad said it this way, when I would walk with him sometimes in Tampa, Florida, my hometown. And my dad said, look, Jim. I said, what, daddy? He said, you see that person there? I said, yes, dad. Well, he said, she has chapped lips. I said, Dad, what do you mean? He says, well, Jimmy, when she or he goes home, they go straight to the mirror and they do this all day long. <laughs> they kiss their image on the mirror. They have chapped lips. That's my dad's way of telling me that person is a little bit egotistical, eh? a little bit prideful. Beloved, Lucifer has chapped lips. Amen? Amen. If you would enter hell today, and I've seen hell, you see one giant mirror in Satan's bedroom. If you're looking for Satan, just go to the bedroom, and you'll see Lucifer in front of that mirror in his bedroom doing this all day long. He has chapped lips. He loves himself more than God. And Augustine said, that's the equation right there. Eventually, beloved, you and I are making a decision. Being here today, we're making a decision. I offered my mass yesterday that everyone who would come here would receive eternal salvation. I offered my mass today that everyone who comes here will receive deliverance from the evil spirits and divine healing. Amen. We're going to have a healing deliverance service at the end of this day. Well, beloved, Augustine said that at the end of your life, you will choose one of two things. That you and I, we will either love ourselves and despise God, or we will love God and despise everything else. One or the other. We will either despise God, loving ourselves completely, or we despise our sinfulness and love God completely. Amen? Amen. And beloved, we have a helper. Her name is Mary, and she's beautiful. We have another helper. His name is Michael, St. Michael the Archangel. He's quite powerful and quite beautiful. I was telling the priest a story last night where I was saying how when I was a young priest, St. Michael came to me. 
I have a wonderful gift to see angels and demons. This day, Michael came and appeared to me, St. Michael the Archangel. He's quite a warrior, by the way. He's very humble. Like sometimes you might think like he's arrogant, but he's so powerful with that sword. He's anything but arrogant. He's very, very humble. He appeared to me to teach me something, and I shared it with the brothers last night. St. Michael said to me, very simply, he said to me, we angels are priestly. We angels are priestly, because we are like priests. In other words, they are celibate like priests. They are pure and chaste. They are warriors for God's people, just like priests. And they give glory to God like the priest at Mass. Amen? Amen. He said to me, we angels are priestly. Therefore, you priests must be angelic. Therefore, you priests must be angelic. Amen? Amen. Boy, we could use some more angelic priests. Amen? Amen. Can we say a Hail Mary right now? That God will raise up among the youth of London, not mediocre priests, no way, holy angelic priests. Can we pray for that now? Let's pray for that right now. We need saintly priests. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And I see a beautiful holy nun. We're going to pray another Hail Mary for saintly sisters to arise from London. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, word without end. Amen. But you know what I've learned recently that to be a married couple is just as holy as being a priest or a nun in this day and age. When everything is like legislating against holy matrimony, I think it takes saints to be married and to be parents today. What do you think? Yes. I think they also are becoming saints. Let's say one more Hail Mary for all the married couples here in the church and all the married couples in London, that God would allow them to become holy saints. Are you ready? For the married couples. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Boy, I tell you, the devil does not like that kind of praying. Now remember, when you pray, beloved, your prayers must be real. Don't let them get too fancy. Don't try to impress God with your prayers. Don't you be impressed with God. Don't try to let him be impressed with you. It doesn't work. God is impressed with you when you're humble. Amen? Amen. Just be real with God. But beloved, that battle that took place between Lucifer with his chap lips and St. Michael was the first battle in history. Lucifer made himself arrogant he made his own choices, you see. He wasn't made that way. But he put himself above God, so to speak. There is a scripture verse where he says, I will place my throne above the Most High. How in the world can any man or angel say things like that? And yet we see it now, don't we? Even now, with the New World Order and certain elites, putting themselves above God. And Michael, a faithful son, saw this. And Michael wasn't in the highest choir, the seraphim. St. Thomas Aquinas thinks he was in a lower choir. In other words, he wasn't as strong as Lucifer, but he had more love and more fervor. Don't worry about your size. Don't worry about your age. You just have love for God and fervor, and you can defeat anything. Amen? Amen. Michael was not the biggest angel. 
So I remember once I acted this out with a group of my, my youth group, my teenage boys in Central America, one of my parishes there. We acted out this primeval battle and I had the biggest boy play Lucifer, the big tough boy. He was bigger than me, he was like six foot seven. And I had the smallest boy, he was like maybe four foot six, and he played St. Michael. And I gave him a bigger sword. I had the little boy was Michael, and the big fat boy was Lucifer. I had Michael beat the Pope out of him. We had a battle, you know, boys love that anyway. We sort of, they will never forget that day in that lesson. But I love what Michael said. This should be our cry. Beginning today in London, this should be your cry. It's what Michael said to Lucifer. When Lucifer dared to put himself above the Most High, Michael said to him, How dare you? Who is like unto God? Who is like unto God? That was a little brother chastising a big brother. Amen? Amen. This was an awesome and is an awesome angel, St. Michael. He's with us and we're gonna pray his chaplain in a little while together. We're gonna to ask him to put reverence, the fear of God in everybody here. And can we pray for all of London? Yes. Can we go head to head and toe to toe against the demons? Yes. We certainly can. Love, beloved, love conquers all. And Michael, maybe you don't know this, Michael loves God. He has a fire of love within him. And I want you now to say his cry. By the way, what does Michael mean? What is Saint Michael? What is that word Michael, Makael? What does it mean? That's exactly what it means. That is actually his cry. He's named after his battle cry. Michael in Aramaic means, who is like unto God? By the way, Gabriel means strength. Gabriel means strength, and El always means God. Gabriel means the strength of God. And what does Raphael mean? The healing or the medicine of God. Rafa, medicine. Michael, though, his name is his cry. And God has immortalized the cry of Michael forever. And that cry needs to be heard in London. Now first, beloved, say this after me in a gentle whisper. Say this after me. Who is like unto God? Who is like unto God? Do you mean it? Yes. Do you feel it? Do you hear it? Now we're gonna say it a second time with a little more authority, a little more conviction. Our whole faith rests on this. Either God is God, and I'm not, or I am God, and I despise Him. No way. I would rather die than take God's place. Amen? Amen. He is our Father. Our Father. Would you say this now a little stronger? Who is like unto God? Who is like unto God? Now again, a little more conviction. Who is like unto God? Who is like unto God? Now, stronger now, say this kind of loud. Who is like unto God? Who is like unto God? Now, stronger still, but put the emphasis on who. Ready? Who is like unto God? Say this, get out in the name of Jesus. Get out in the name of Jesus. Who is like unto God? Who is like unto God? Only God is great. Only God is great. You are not great. You are not great. Out. Out. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Only God is great. Only God is great. Who is great? God. I can't hear you. Who is great? God. I can't hear you. Who is great? God. Beloved, let me tell you theology. God is not great. God is greatness. Amen. He's not just great. God is greatness. Amen? Amen. Jesus is not true. Jesus is truth. Amen? Amen. The Holy Spirit is not pure. The Holy Spirit is purity. Amen? Amen. Your God is awesome. Amen?
Beloved, raise your right hand now to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and say this, God, you are awesome. God, you are awesome. You are beautiful. You are beautiful. You are mighty. You are mighty. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. You alone are God. You alone are God. Show yourself to me today. Show yourself to me today. Reveal yourself to us. Reveal yourself to us. For who is like unto God? No one. No one. No one. No one. No one. No one. Amen. Amen. Congratulations, you just became real Catholics. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beloved, the Father in heaven is beautiful. He's unutterably beautiful. You know what the Bible says? No one can look upon God and live. You know why it says that, don't you? Because he, our Lord, is so astoundingly beautiful, if you were to peek at him for one millisecond, you would die of joy. Your mind and my mind cannot take it. He's too beautiful for the human race. Amen? Amen. That's why when you die, if you're faithful to Jesus, and you will be, I'm claiming all of you for heaven today. Is that all right? Father, Hear the prayer of your broken servant. I claim all of my brothers and sisters here, I don't care how naughty they are, forgive them with the blood of your son, and one day through Mary's prayers, bring everyone here to the awesome halls of heaven. Do you agree with me? Yes. yes. The Bible says, where two or more agree, it shall be done. Can we agree? Yes. It's agreed that everyone here becomes a saint. Yes. Are we in agreement? Yes. Good. We all die today, we'll be canonized together. They'll call us Father Jim and Companions. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, Jesus came to show us something good, not something bad. Something beautiful, not something ugly. Something loving, not something fearful. He came to show us the joy of his own heart. The Father is the joy of his heart. I remember the story of two little boys playing their trucks in the front yard. They were playing the little trucks, two little kids, when a giant, a real truck, a pickup truck, pulled in to the, to the driveway. A beautiful pickup truck came in. The two little boys were playing the little cars. And the one boy, when that big truck pulled in, he jumped up. And the other little boy who was on the ground said, no, stay and play with me, stay and play. But the other boy who jumped up said, no, he said, my father is here, my father is here. And the other boy said, no, stop it. He said, no, my father is here. And he ran to the truck and jumped into his father's arms. That is Jesus Christ. That is Jesus. Amen? Amen. In other words, Jesus would say this to you today, if he was here and he is here. He would say to you, if you think I'm beautiful, wait till you see my Father. Amen. Amen. Now listen to this. Logic. Who is the most beautiful creature God ever made? Mary. The Virgin Mary. Mother Angelica said that when the angels look at Mary in heaven today, it takes their breath away and they gasp in heaven. The angels... <gasps> Every time they see her, they gasp at the beauty of Mary. Isn't it true? They gasp. She's so incredibly beautiful, and she gets more beautiful with every passing second. And so will you when you enter heaven. Amen? Amen. So don't worry about your pimples. They'll all disappear when you get to heaven. <laughs> We're all going to be beautiful and handsome forever. Now, Mary is astonishingly beautiful. One time when she appeared to my brother and I, he became a priest as well, Father Tony and I. When we were teenagers, we saw Jesus and Mary. The thing I remember the most, their eyes. That's what I remember the most, is the eyes of Jesus and Mary. In the eyes of our Lord, your Lord and mine, not mine, our Lord, we have one Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. We have one Savior, Jesus. There's no other name in London or throughout the world by which man can be saved. 
Is it true? Jesus Christ is the one name and he's unutterably beautiful, but in his eyes and Mary's eyes, you actually can see heaven in their eyes. I've never seen anything like it. They're so beautiful. Now listen guys, if they are that beautiful, the body of Jesus and the spirit and body of Mother Mary, that beautiful, God the Father made them. He made the body of Jesus. He made Mary completely. If they are that beautiful and they emerge from the fingertips of our Father, how beautiful is your Father? Every sunset, every sunrise, every beautiful baby, every beautiful bride, Every beautiful flower, every piece of music like Mozart of Vivaldi, it all came forth from the Father. Amen? Amen. I'm trying to make a point here, beloved, that Satan is determined to destroy fatherhood in London throughout the world so that we despise fathers. We think they're mean or ugly. He's doing this on purpose. The only one who's mean and ugly is Satan. He's making us think the opposite of reality. We want to begin to know how beautiful God really is. Amen? Amen. We want a revelation of his beauty to your heart and soul. When I was a little boy, my dad was a great dad, but things were not all perfect in my family. You know, he was a great man, a judge and a lawyer, and a scientist as well. He would design buildings and boats and airplanes. I remember once that some admirals came from the Pentagon to my living room to speak to my dad about an aircraft design. He was an amazing man. However, my father did not relate well to my brothers and sisters and I. I'm one of eight children, five girls and three boys. My daddy, as wonderful as he was, he was faithful to my mother, never an adulterer. I never saw my father growing up even once look at something dirty on television. Not even once. I mean, like with the slightest bit of immodesty, my dad would turn the channel. I love that about my father, his integrity, you see. So he had that beautiful gift of justice, integrity, he was very smart. But my dad did not know how to relate to you and I. I didn't realize till much later, because it was hidden from us children, that my father's father, my grandfather, who had become my best friend growing up, I didn't realize that my grandfather was a drunk. Like Matthew Talbot in Ireland. They hid it from us. Not, they did not want to you know, lower his image in our eyes, his grandchildren. By the grace of Almighty God, and grace only comes from God, by the grace of God, he conquered alcohol Amen. before I was born. But when he was in alcohol, he would be found outside, literally in the ditch, unconscious and drunk. So my grandmother, she had to separate from him. My grandmother, very faithful Catholic, went to the bishop, and she got what's called a canonical separation, not a divorce, not an annulment, but a church-approved separation because he was drinking the family out of hearth and home, you might say, of everything. There's no money left even for food. My grandmother had to get rid of my grandfather for the time being, and my dad grew up without a father. And he and his brothers, he had four brothers, they would fight each other a lot. This is during the Depression. My dad went through hell, and I didn't even know it. So it came to my dad, and speaking to my brothers and sisters and I, he wasn't affectionate at all. I never once, growing up, not even once, ever heard my dad say to me, I love you, Jim. Not even once. And I did not realize the effect that had on me. Because I, I thought I had the best dad in the world, and I did in many ways. But your dad could be intelligent, and he could be wealthy, he could be talented, he could even be in the house with you every day, 
But if he doesn't unite with you through love, you will die with envy. Amen? Amen? Isn't it true? And I know as I'm speaking that I'm touching many, many, many hearts today. I can feel it. That we have failed to teach our men, and by the way, forgive me for saying this, we have failed to teach our priests how to love God's people. Amen? Amen? I'm not a priest to lord my authority over you. You see what I mean? I am not your master. Jesus Christ is our master. Amen? Amen. I am your servant. A father is first a servant. But he should love his wife and his children and express love to them. And that's why when the Divine Son was baptized in the Holy Land, he came out of the water. The Bible says, the voice of the Father was heard. And what did the Father say? This is my beloved Son. Listen to my Son. I love my Son. I'm proud of him. The Father affirmed his Son. And he will affirm you today during this conference and during our healing service. He wants to say over your head as well, this is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter. And I'm proud of her. I'm proud of him. Amen? Amen. That's why Therese of Nazu, Pope Pius XII said she was the greatest saint in modern times. Therese of Nazu, little Therese. She said, at the end of our lives, when you and I die and go before the judgment seats of God, we will be judged, and that includes every father as well, every priest as well. We will be judged, she said, on one thing alone, on love, on love, and on love. Amen? Amen. Would you put your right hand over your left chest right now, brothers and sisters? Your right hand over the left part of your chest, that's where your heart is. And would you say this? Father God, in the name of Jesus, touch me with your love. Touch me with your love. I love you. I love you. I need you. I need you. But I need to feel you. But I need to feel you. I need to know that you love me. I need to know that you love me. Reveal your love to me. Reveal your love to me. So that I can rejoice. So that I can rejoice. Jesus. Jesus. Pray to your Father. Pray to your Father. That both He and you. That both He and you. Would enter my heart today. Would enter my heart today. So that I will never be lonely again. So that I will never be lonely again. Come into me and live inside of me. Come into me and live inside of me. And show me the way to heaven. And show me the way to heaven. Now would you turn to the one to your left or to your right and tell them, don't worry, God loves you. Don't worry, God loves you. <laughs> don't worry, God loves you. <laughs>